Hey everybody, welcome to this first video in a series of tutorials that will teach you how to use Pixlr E. And this is the program we're going to be using to learn about graphic design this quarter in Arts Appreciation. And the more I dig into Pixlr E, the more impressed I am with uh, just what you can do with it. And I really think that if any of you go further in graphic design and end up using Photoshop, being familiar with all the tools in Pixlr E will translate really well into that. The other thing I wanted to say before we start is the reason I'm making video tutorials here is I really want you to be able to pause at any time and just mess around with things. Graphic design is really about experimenting and trying new things, and I didn't want all of you to be constrained to moving at the same pace. So hopefully this video, these videos will help you be able to pause when you need to, try things out. Um, if you forget how to do something, you can always come back later to a video. So I hope these are useful and this is a good structure for learning. So this video is going to be all about how to really get started in Pixlr. And I want to show you how to navigate around the overall program, how to start, get started with an image, and that kind of thing. So let's go ahead and start. When you're first coming for a graphic design uh, project, you may already have an image that you want to manipulate. Maybe you found it online, or maybe you took a picture with your camera, and you want to bring that image in. There's a couple of different ways you can do that. First of all, you can click Open Image right here. And that will actually talk to your computer, and you can navigate on your computer anywhere here to, um, to a place where you have a, a photo saved. So for example, in Downloads on a Chromebook, or maybe it'll be in your camera, or maybe it'll be under Google Drive. You can click on Google Drive and then navigate in your folders to where that picture is and open it that way. Um, also, if you had for some reason taken a picture on a camera and connected your camera to the computer with like a USB cable, it should show up on the left here and you could click on that and bring a photo in from a camera as well. The other option is, let's say you found an image online that you want uh, to use. They actually make it really easy to bring that into Pixlr. So let me just actually go to a new tab here and just search for like kitten pictures. And let's say I was, you know, doing a Google image search and I found a uh, really cute picture of a kitten. How about this one right here? There's a couple of different ways you can bring this uh, picture into Pixlr. Uh, first of all, you can two finger click on the picture and copy the image address, which is the URL that locates where that picture is. And then you can come back here to Pixlr and click load URL and paste that in and hit load. And it'll load that picture from that address. And you can see it did that right here. I found that that works a lot of the time, but for some reason, for some images, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't always work. Another way that you can do that is you can just go to your picture actually and two finger click and copy the image itself. So copy image. And then you can come back to Pixlr and you can actually just hit control V, uh, which, is, which is paste, and it'll actually just open the picture as well that way. Now I have two project tabs here of the same picture. So I'm just going to exit out of those. Um, another thing, just a uh, side note, you can see how it keeps your projects that you've been working on down here, at least for a while. Um, so anyway, uh, another way that you can get pictures that are, that's really nice is you can, let's say you have, you, you know, you want to start with a picture, but you don't have a specific image in mind. Pixlr comes built in with this stock library of images. It's really nice. Over here on the left-hand side, click on images, and it'll bring up this search bar, and you can search for an image here, built right in, inside of Pixlr. So I'm going to type in kitten, and now here I have a bunch of pictures. And these tend to be really high-resolution images as well, which is super nice. So let's say I choose this one. It'll bring it in. It'll actually ask me what resolution I want to use. And in this case, I'm just going to choose web and hit apply and it'll take a minute, but it'll open up that as well. So there are a lot of different ways to start with a picture, which is really awesome. I'm gonna go back to the home here for a second though, home. And let's say you're starting a project in Pixlr, but you don't actually wanna have an image. You wanna start with a blank canvas because you know you're gonna bring a bunch of different image layers in. Uh, you can create a new blank canvas by clicking on create new right here. And that'll give you this menu that has a bunch of different pre-sized canvases for different purposes, like a social media post. It's square, 1080 by 1080. Um, web medium is just a general web image that's sort of going to be a rectangle. Uh, this is set to be like a thumbnail for a YouTube image, 720 by or 1280 by 720. 
I'm just going to go web medium for this one. For a lot of our projects, the resolution isn't going to matter a ton. Um, you probably want it to be somewhere around like 1280 by 720-ish in that area. Um, and then you can actually give your canvas a name right away. So like I could say kitten, for example. And you can even customize the size of your canvas to be whatever you want it to be over here in this box. The last thing uh, in this here that I wanted to show you is you can actually set it to have a background or not. If you keep this turned off, it's going to be just those uh, black and gray checkerboard squares that mean it's transparent, which for the most time, that's what we're going to want to use. But um, if you turn it on, you can actually choose a color for the background. Like if you want it to be a white background or any color, and it'll have everything in the background be that color. So that's pretty cool. I'm actually going to keep it turned off though, because I want a transparent background and hit create. And now I have this basic uh, canvas that I can start bringing layers into right here. And in the third video of this series, we're going to talk more about layers and how to bring images in as layers. Um, but then you could start working here. You could start using your brushes to brush right on top of this canvas. So that's another way to start. Um, lastly, just so that you know it's there, let's say you're, you are coming to Pixlr and you have a specific design project that you need to make like a flyer or a poster. Uh, Pixlr does have built in some templates as well. So you can click on templates on the side here and then it'll ask you what your purpose that you're making it for is because they've actually pre-made templates for all these different purposes. Like, are you making an Instagram post or are you making a you know, a, a flyer. So you click on flyer, then it gives you a whole bunch of templates. And you can open one of these and it'll give you all of your layers pre-made. You can customize the colors and you can change the text and change the photos, but the layout is sort of already made there for you. So that's pretty nice. In this quarter, because we're learning about graphic design and we're this the templates sort of are doing the design for you, we're mostly going to stay away from that and and just design from the ground up because we that's what we're really trying to learn about. Um, so that's that. A uh, couple of other things that I just want to show you. I'm going to go back to my, um, my project that I had created here and a couple of navigation things to show you. Along the left-hand side, when you're in a project, you have a bunch of tools that you can use to edit or manipulate your image that you have. Um, on the right-hand side, you have some panels. And let me actually restore the original view. You have three different panels, Navigate, Layers, and History. Um, layers is a really important panel that we'll really dig into in video three. Um, history just gives you, it just shows all the different edits that you've made to your picture. So you can always go back if you need to. And like, I didn't like that edit. And you can actually go back in your history to change or remove an edit that you made, which is really nice. The navigate panel, you can zoom in and out with the navigate panel, um, which is sort of nice. I often actually get rid of the navigate panel because I want more space for my layers. But if you ever delete a panel and you want it back again, you're like, ah, oh, where did my panels go? You can either click here uh, or no, I think you go to view, restore all panels, and then you've got your panels back again. So that's basically the navigation. The only other thing you may want to know about is um, when you click on a tool here, uh, along the top, this bar right here that currently says no layer, you'll get a bunch of other sort of um, controls for that tool. And so we'll look more at that later. Um, this home button will take you back to the Pixlr homepage to start a new project. And you can always get back to your projects by clicking on latest projects. Um, and then up here, of course, there is a regular menu that you would find in any program that gives you a lot of the same options that you have over here. Um, so in the second video, we're actually going to look at adjustment and filter, but just know that you do have more options up here as well. So that's a little bit of a tour around Pixlr to help you sort of know how to do different things and get started.